Hey, I'm Rick Rocco with Blue Hills Crafters, and I wanted to just share a, a brand new piece I just created, actually created for this, uh, this uh, show. It is the um, Wine Barrel Lazy Susan. First, was I, I thought of just making a charcuterie board, and I put it out there a couple days ago for some friends, and they weren't too impressed. They all thought it was supposed to spin. So um, for today, I ended up putting a, uh, a Lazy Susan spinner on the back of it. This is actually created by a wine barrel top. And then what I did was uh, I took the, the top band and I cut it down a little bit and, and put that on there. Uh, but yeah, it works really well. And um, I thought it was pretty cool to make. Anyway, you are getting it for the very first time. Even my wife doesn't know that this exists yet. That's that. A couple other things that we that we make is uh, we, we made a lot of uh, the charcuterie boards uh, center cut, full cut, um, or full stave, end cuts, and then someone actually I did this for myself, and I didn't I didn't think anybody would want them, but I, I actually took the bung hole, which is right there. This is where they uh, they put the wine in and take the wine out, if you look at it from this end, and uh, and I just made a a charcuterie board out of this just for myself. I had one one of our uh, people come downstairs in my wine cellar and say, "Oh my gosh, how much do you want for that one?" And uh, and I and I said, "You don't want that." And uh, and he said, "Yeah, that one is super super cool." And so I ended up making these. And even though they're, you know, they're kind of weird because they have a hole in the middle of them, people like them. So I thought that was pretty cool. This one right here, this is a full stave uh, charcuterie board, and uh, it's big. It's got you know room for a big party. This is the back of it. I'm gonna show you how I make them. A lot of the stuff that I'm gonna do right now, I took out a lot of the big heavy stuff. So I already pre-sanded these boards. There's, there's three boards. This is called a stave. It's a wine stave. This is how they make wine barrels. They put a whole bunch of these together and they put the top and the bottom and then they put bands over top of them. What I do is I, uh, I just uh, take them all apart. These things all fall out. I, I number them so I know which ones go with which so it's a tighter fit. I take the three of them and I sand them all down, which I'm not going to do today because uh, it's, it's too loud in the studio. So I already pre-did them. And then I cut slots in it and I put what's called a biscuit. This is a biscuit, okay? And I put the biscuits in them and I glue them with, with a tie bond glue that is um, uh, for indoor outdoor it's waterproof i thought that's the best the best stuff to use because you know you get they get wet they get all kinds of stuff um so i want to make sure they that they uh they last so what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of put it together again it's already been sanded i'm not going to glue them i didn't want to get into too much detail so i take the biscuits i put three biscuits in it to hold it tight like that then i take another one put it on top after i glue it goes like that put three more biscuits in like that missing missing a biscuit but that's okay for the show you can see what I'm talking about and you go like that it's all tightened up like that and then what I'll do overnight I'm going to I'm gonna clamp it overnight so it's nice and tight and I tighten them all down I, I usually make about 15 of these at a, at, at a time. Once I do that, I take the steel bands and I put them where they belong on the board. After I put all the pieces of steel on, I change my bit to put the legs on. I make these legs out of oak as well. Change the bit. Put the oak, put the oak bands on like this. That's it. I let it stay overnight with everything connected. The next day, I take it apart. And I got a charcuterie board. This is the way it comes out. This is actually the red wine created this color. This is natural as, as this it has a little stain on the back. I had a challenge that this was going to be used for food. So I didn't want to put any kind of shellac or any kind of stain on it. So I had to think, what can I use that will that will protect the wood yet still, um, uh, you know, look pretty. So what I did was I got this butcher butcher block oil, 
which is of course natural. And I drizzle some on like that. Is on every board, and you'll see you'll see the richness, how it, it's changing the color, and it's just sucking right into the wood. It stays nice and shiny for a little while, and then eventually it's going to get dull because it's gonna, the the wood's going to draw it in. The way you clean these is really easy too. You don't put them in the dishwasher. You can't because uh, it is wood, and you don't want to soak them. All you want to do is clean them off uh, after you're done using them and put it away. Every Every couple of weeks of using it, go ahead and get your butcher block oil out and just re um, re oil it. Put it aside. It's good for a couple of weeks after that. I'm Rick Rocco, Blue Hills Crafters, and um, the reason why we chose Blue Hills Crafters is because I live in Wallingford and I live right um, off Cook Hill Road, and my backyard looks at Blue Hills orchards. And I just every day I wake up, I am just uh, blown away of my uh, my backyard and my view it's like going on vacation every single day and so when we started to uh, think of a name we couldn't think of any better name but just to honor blue hills orchard and now uh, you know we call it blue hills craft that's how i get the name mm -hmm.